Hello there, welcome to my presentation. In this short video, I'll be demystifying the pathophysiology of an asthmatic attack. If you're not yet a subscriber, please subscribe to my channel and click on the notification bell so you can be notified each time I upload a new presentation. So let's go into our presentation. An asthmatic attack begins with the presence of an allergen in the respiratory tract, an allergen. So this allergen um, could be any substance that you are reactive to or you are sensitive to. Common allergens include pollen, dust, and modanda. etc etc okay these are common allergens so the presence of any of these will uh, lead to what we call a hypersensitivity reaction hypersensitivity reaction so in this hypersensitivity reaction there are cells that are usually involved to carry out this process. This, the following are some of the cells. We have dendritic cells. You need to know what these cells do or the functions of these cells in this hypersensitivity reaction. Though in this video, I will not be explaining the details of what these cells do. Mast cells, neutrophils, eosinophils and other cells that I will not mention here but these are some of the important cells that are involved in this hypersensitivity reaction so the present as these cells react they will lead to production of uh, three important chemicals and these three important chemicals uh, include histamine, prostaglandins, and leukotrienes. So these are some of the three important chemicals that are released when these cells react to the presence of an allergen. Okay, so this um, allergen will lead to a hypersensitivity reaction, which will um, uh, which will involve these cells that are listed here. Then the reaction of these cells will lead to the production of these three important chemicals. So histamine has uh, some of the functions as follows. It leads to smooth muscle. smooth muscle contraction. These are muscles um, in the bronchioles or the airways. They, co they contract. Then also it leads to vasodilation. Vasodilation. So when, when the smooth muscles of the airways con contract, uh, they lead to reduced um, diameters of the airways of the bronchioles. So, um, yes, they lead to reduced uh, diameters of the bronchus or the airways. The universal dilation usually leads to increased uh, blood supply or blood flow to the affected area or to the, to the bronchus or the respiratory tract. So vaso dilation will lead to increased blood supply to the affected area. Then prostaglandins have the following effects. Prostaglandins also cause vasodilation. V vasodilation also has the same effect uh, as um, promoting increased blood supply to the affected area. So as vasodilation increase, there is also increased vascular permeability. Vascular permeability 
right? So this means that the blood, the blood vessels lining the bronchus or the respiratory tract um, begin to release plasma or uh, fluid from the blood. So there's um, what we call edema takes place because uh, these fluids that are escaping the blood vessels, they tend to accumulate in the interstitial spaces of the smooth muscles. Also, there is um, increased mucus production as observed in, in um, asthmatic patients. So they'll be coughing up mucus because of the prostaglandins that are promoting this vascular permeability, which is leading to swelling in the bronchioles and the trachea and also leading to increased production of mucus. Then we have cytokines, increased production of cytokines. Cytokines, these are proteins, small proteins that are released by uh, cells. They act as intercellular messengers, so they transmit information from one cell to another cell, uh, thereby recruiting many cells or more cells into this hypersensitivity reaction. Okay. Uh, cytokines, apart, apart from uh, this, we also have leukotrienes. Leukotrienes also have these functions, smooth muscle contraction. They also promote smooth muscle contraction, uh, the same as histamine. Also leads to uh, increase, they promote production of eosinophils, of eosinophils in the bone marrow. Okay. It's not fuel production. They promote isinophil production in the bone marrow. So this production of isinophils in the bone marrow leads to what we call the late phase of an asthmatic attack. Late phase of an asthmatic response or attack. So the, the production of eosinophils in the bone marrow leads to the late phase of an asthmatic attack or response. All right, so the reaction of these three chemicals usually leads to uh, three cardinal effects, which we collectively call the triad. And um, these lead to the signs and symptoms uh, that are usually observed or seen in people with an asthmatic attack. And these are the responses or the, the effects that um, come about as a result of the reactions of these three chemicals. So we have what you call inflammatory response. Um, if you have read on inflammation, of course you know the four cardinal features of inflammation. One of them is swelling, there is pain, there is redness. All those features, they usually happen, they also take place in a person with asthma. Then we have bronchospasms. Bronchospasms, these are involuntary contraction and relaxation of the smooth muscles in the bronchos. Okay. Then we also have bronchospasms constriction bronchoconstriction bronchoconstriction this is the uh, narrowing of the of the bronchioles the narrowing of the bronchioles meaning the diameter of the bronchioles reduce in size thereby uh, producing symptoms such as dyspnea because air is going to be forced out through the narrowed airways the action of these three chemicals collectively they lead to inflammatory response, bronchospasms, and bronchoconstriction. Then, uh, these three effects, they are the ones that produce now what we call the asthmatic attack. They lead to asthmatic attack. These three lead to an asthmatic attack, producing all the signs and symptoms of an asthmatic attack. Okay, these three result in an asthmatic attack. 
where you observe all the signs and symptoms of an asthmatic attack. And these signs and symptoms include cough, you, there is dyspnea, there is chest pains, wheezing, and many more symptoms. Cough is usually due to irritation, irritation in the airways of course, and dyspnea is usually due to airway obstruction, chest pain is due to inflammation, wheezing is due to obstruction, airway obstruction. Okay, so this is uh, the summary of the pathophysiology of an asthmatic attack. It begins with the presence of an allergen, then this allergen will lead to uh, what we call a hypersensitivity reaction, which involves these cells as listed here, dendritic cells, mast cells, neutrophils, and eosinophils. Um, it's, it is the action of these cells that result in the production of histamine, uh, prostaglandins, leukotrienes, and other chemicals that are not listed here. But these are the three cardinal chemicals that are involved. And now the reaction of these chemicals result in three responses, three cardinal responses called the inflammatory response, bronchospasms, and bronchoconstriction. It is these reactions now that lead to an asthmatic attack resulting in these signs and symptoms. Thank you.